Hey, what's up everybody? David Wood here once again for David Wood FX with the first in a short series of tutorials on gradient mapping. This is a request from Gimper.net from a user who was having some trouble figuring out how gradient mapping works and how it helps to blend elements in the image together. So this is going to be a short tutorial. This part here is about blending uh, characters in, how to gradient map the characters in the environment, and the second one will be in gradient mapping the overall image. So let's go ahead and get started. Here I have two um, rough recreations of some signatures I recently made. As you can see, there's some definite problems with the uh, characters. Uh, in this first one here, you can see the lighting, it's a white light. It's not a green or a blue, which you can see in the background. And in the second one here, a venom, uh, you can see the environment in the background is a brown, so it's more uh, natural. But venom here, he's got some green down on his lower body, and on the top here, it is blue. So we're going to try and fix those problems. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll be working on this image. And in case you don't know what gradient mapping is, it's a pretty... Um, easy tool to use. In fact, you, there's not even any options for it. That's just how easy it is. But to begin with, what we're going to do is take this render here of this guy that I got out of a resource pack, and I'm going to duplicate the render. Next, um, let's just run the default gradient. I'm going to go to Colors, Map, Gradient Map, and wow look at that it made it black and white now you're probably thinking wow what's the big deal with this um, there is a big deal with this it took the original image and used the foreground color to uh, recolor the dark portions of the image and the background color to color the lighter areas of the image so you can see how this is going to be useful a little bit later on. It's not uh, really that exciting at the moment. Uh, the first thing to do, do is undo this gradient and talk a little bit about how the gradient works. So obviously when you're using the foreground to background gradients what it's doing is taking the foreground color and putting it to the dark areas and the background color to the light areas. So if I was to change this say I made this dark red and the light area to a light blue and I ran the gradient again there you can see it colored it again dark area is red light area is this blue then what you can go about doing is fooling around with the blend modes of this image and coming up with some pretty interesting result first thing though to get the character to blend in as you can see in this image the character is got the white light on him and what I want to do is to give him some color so he blends into the scene and to do this I'm going to use two colors from the background so what we'll do is we'll take the color picker and we'll go over here and I already know where the colors are that I want the first one I'm going to select this dark blue over here and then the second one uh, holding down control to set the background color I'm going to come over to this light green area and click now I'll go back to the duplicate of our render and go to filters repeat gradient map and there you can see it gradient mapped the image this dark blue to the dark areas the light green to the light areas now the thing to do is to take this layer and change the blend mode of it and if you don't have uh, the layers tab open then you want to go to windows dockable dialogs layers but now we can play around with the blend mode and this allows us to get some cool results there. I set it on multiply and you can see it darkened it up. It added the colors that I chose to the image but it really doesn't have any highlights or features like the original does. So if we keep going down the list we can see that overlay does a cool job. Uh, it doesn't incredibly change it but it does give it some more color. And as we go further down the list we can see some of the other results and grain merge looks pretty cool but for this example I think hard light probably 
is going to work best. Yeah, definitely. So there you can see I've set it on hard light and we go from this original picture with the white light to this modified picture. We can see he's got like the green light on his clothing and his face and in his hair and that looks pretty cool. And the cool thing is we can duplicate the main layer again and if we reset our default colors we'll just do colors or filters repeat gradient map made it black and white and we can set this one on overlay and as you can see this really increases the contrast on the image and then we can fool around for the opacity on this and for this generally generally uh, 50 to 60 is a pretty good margin and I'm going with 60 for this image and uh, okay so this image uh, the character looks like he's in the scene pretty well. You could duplicate the hard light layer and set it on overlay instead and then just change the opacity of that. It can come out pretty good. Now I'm going to open up this second signature that I had already done. And as I said before, he doesn't blend in because of the blue and the green. So we'll take his layer, duplicate Venom. And what we're going to do is take the foreground color and make it a kind of a brown. That looks pretty good. It's rather neutral color for the background. Now what we can just do is go to colors, map, gradient map. And there you can see it made him brown and black. Now we can go through the layer modes once again. And in this case, the best ones to choose from are hue and color down at the very bottom hue and color um, pretty much hue and as you can see hue and color do basically the same thing color completely recolorizes the image while hue uh, sort of less it's less than color but in this instance I think hue looks best and uh, you can lower the opacity of that make it a little more neutral or more black and white desaturated there you go that's the word and just kinda set that in there nicely and then we can even duplicate the layer again set the blend mode back on normal do a normal gradient map or just black to white and set the blend mode to overlay and as you can see that really darkens it up uh, but we can go ahead and mess with the opacity of that. That looks pretty cool. So there you have another example of how you can get your uh, elements in a scene, in this case the characters, to blend into the scene better. Um, once you've done the gradient mapping on those you would want to go ahead and merge them down onto the image. Uh, so then you can go ahead and add other effects and stuff to it. Um, but let me just show you the results of these images. Um, here is the first one that I did. And you can see I've got the coloring going on. That one I really, really like. That came out really good. And then here's the second one that we just completed. And as you can see, it's a lot smaller than the image we have here um, but again he's more neutral he doesn't have that annoying blue and green showing through um, so I guess that is it for this quick tutorial I hope that I've solved or er, explained some of your gradient mapping problems and shown you how gradient mapping can really uh, unite all the elements in your scene um, the next tutorial will be on blending the overall image. Uh, that should be out sometime, hopefully, later this week. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I'm David Wood, David Wood FX, and I will see you guys next time.